I don't know if people realize that about 52% of the population in Gaza are under the age of 25. So these are people who at a very young age have already been through three major wars where their personal safety is completely at risk. They don't feel safe, their homes have been destroyed, they can't go to school normally. This is the life, this is what their existence is. So if you want peace, the way to do it is not by raising children who only know insecurity and violence. Um, and I think that that feeling is, is expressed in some of these writings here. Um, this one account, for instance, is from a, a young man in his 20s named Omar Grabe. And this is from his blog in the middle of July. It was right, like, I would say about days 9 through 11 um, of the war. He says, I used to look out of my bedroom window and stare at the sky at different times of the day and lose myself in my dreams in the vastness of the skies above. I would think about my life, where I would be years from now, what I would want to accomplish, and so many other important but trivial thoughts. However, most importantly, I would imagine traveling to different countries and cities around the world. My bedroom window was like the window to the universe. Through it, I imagined the next adventure in which I would embark. Right now, the sight of my bedroom window makes me cringe. I have been housebound for more than 10 days, a little prison located inside the biggest open-air prison on Earth, besieged Gaza. Due to regular nearby explosions, I have been told by my family not to go near the window. It started to look like it has prison bars. And when I get close to it for some fresh air, I start wondering about completely different questions, such as, when will I ever see my friends again? When will I see Gaza's beach? When will I visit my favorite places in Gaza? Will I survive to dream through this window again? With war, nothing is guaranteed. Who can guarantee my survival when four little kids playing on the beach are killed by Israel? An Israeli warship bombed a shack near the boys, who ran away after that first strike and were then directly, deliberately hit in another strike. They had hopes and dreams too. Is this the end, I asked myself? How did I go from dreaming about the impossible to wondering whether I would live to see another day? At the same window. Ah, war. I regretted listening to Adele's Skyfall song. It's not the right time to quote it or even to play it in my head. I don't want the sky to fall on Gaza. The United Nations proposed a brief humanitarian ceasefire of five hours on Thursday, 17th July. Both Hamas and Israel agreed to it. It started at 10 a.m. Yet seconds before the ceasefire ended, Israel committed a massacre and killed a number of people, which ruins the whole concept of, of a humanitarian ceasefire. At 10 a.m., drones and warplanes were still over our heads. When the ceasefire first went into effect, nothing changed. Sorry. Few people left their homes. Silence was laying heavy over Gaza. Careful anticipation spread until, just a little over an hour in, people start leaving their houses in unison as if everyone had coordinated it. But of course they didn't. Cars started moving, streets became busy, people rushed to stock up the items they needed. An electric mood ran through Gaza. Ironic how life in the human body is represented by the blood flowing through the veins, but death is represented in Gaza when blood is flowing in the streets. I stayed up all night wondering, would the short ceasefire happen? Should I go out? Where would I go out? What would I see? What would I do? What would I buy? A series of endless questions bottled up a building sensation of pure anticipation. Oh, what adrenaline. When the time came, I went to the door with no certain plans in mind and started to open it when it all hit me. What the hell was I doing? I closed the door and went back in. As much as I was dying to go out, to breathe, to see the sky and the beach, to see any of my friends, to see the streets, I realized I was being treated like a prisoner in a lab rat, both at the same time. I'm being confined and controlled. I'm being told when I'm allowed to leave and when I should return to lock myself back home and wait till we get bombed and killed again. It felt like a scam, a humanitarian scam, and that we need to stock up on medicine and food, which I understand. How could I ever look at the beach the same when those little bakery angels played football at the beach in the early morning? and then ran for their lives only to be shelled and killed by Israel for playing football. Isn't it enough that it took us years to forget the Dahlia family was massacre on the Gaza Beach years ago? Now we have a new massacre that reminds us of the old ones. How will I ever look at Gaza Beach as the same now? The beach is So we're just gonna get in a circle now, okay. inside here. So if you can...